Ukraine has begun to create a powerful fortified area in the occupied territory of the Kursk region, which includes a field hospital, full-fledged strongholds and dugouts. This is reported by the Telegram channel Vichik OGPU, which is connected to Russian security forces. According to information received from the Russians, the Ukrainian military continues its offensive and is conducting military operations in several directions at once. Local media and Z-War correspondents publish information with a significant delay, which is due to the delay in incoming information. Ukrainian sabotage groups are actively operating in the region, striking at the rear areas of the Russians, setting up ambushes and also confusing the Russian command. According to the channel's sources, the main battles are taking place in the area of the village of Korenevo, which is located 30 kilometers from Sudza. Ukraine may have taken a first step toward a strategy change in its defense against the Russian invasion. That's how General Spindel, assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire in the U.S., described the recent developments in western Russia's Kursk region. Ukraine cannot continue to fight this war in the same way it has been for the past two years. It just simply doesn't have the manpower or weapon stores to do so, said Spindel, a foreign policy and security expert. Russia is much bigger and has a larger military and Ukraine can't continue fighting Russia on equal footing, she said. It needs to embrace much more of an asymmetric style war and bring the conflict into Russia if it wants to have hope of staying in the fight. Spindle said this means that instead of confronting the Russian army in many respects superior on the open battlefield, Ukraine would need to employ tactics more appropriate to the strengths and armaments available to Ukrainian forces, exactly what appears to be happening in Kursk. I see this operation in Russia as Ukraine's attempt to slightly shift its strategy. She told DW, it is showing that Russian territory is no longer off limits and that Ukraine will attack Russian territory to force Russia to divert its forces from bombing and causing destruction in Ukraine. On the sixth day of Ukraine's offensive into the Kursk region in southern Russia, there is mounting evidence that the Ukrainian Corps, part of or up to five brigades plus at least one 400-strong independent battalion, plans to stay, Forbes reports. There are more than 2,000 soldiers in these five brigades. The Ukrainians are digging trenches. Anticipating a trench war along or near the existing front line, the Russians are also digging in, the article says. That both sides are consolidating their positions does not mean the Ukrainians have ended their offensive. Nor does it mean the Russians cannot counterattack and push the Ukrainians back to the border, analysts say. But this means that stabilization of the front line and long-term Ukrainian occupation of part of Kursk are on the agenda, the journalists emphasize. Ukrainian sources have spotted industrial excavators at work on both sides of the front line. Once the enemy picks up shovels, in two days it will be just as difficult to take the forest stands as it was near Avdiivka, in eastern Ukraine, Russian military correspondent Alexander Karchenko added. It took the Russian military six months to roll back Ukrainian defenses in Avdiivka, and cost it tens of thousands of casualties. Once the trenches are complete, that diversion could become long-term, if not permanent. Freedom of Russia Legion addressed the residents of Kursk Oblast, calling on them to write petitions to Putin. Russian volunteers fighting on the side of the Ukrainian armed forces drew the attention of Kursk residents to the fact that the Bucha scenario that the Kremlin propagandists were expecting did not materialize in their region. Civilians are not lying by the roads but are writing petitions to Putin asking for help, the LSR telegram channel indicated. Russian volunteers reminded their compatriots that Putin did not save the residents of Belgorod region, on whose heads cabs from Russian army bombers have been falling for several months. Bad news, Putin won't help you, but we can, they promised at Freedom of Russia. LSR called on residents of the Kursk region to record the movements of Russian troops on photos and videos and send them to them. Recall, a counter-terrorism operation regime has been implemented in the Bryansk, Kursk and Belgorod regions of Russia. Moscow cites an increased threat from Ukraine as the reason for these measures, according to the Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee and acting governor of Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov. 
The Russian side reports that the decision to implement the counter-terrorism operation regime in the Bryansk region was made by the local FSB office led by Major General S. V. Voronin. Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee statement cites increased levels of sabotage and terrorist threats from Ukraine as the reason for these measures. Additionally, the announcement includes notifying interacting security forces and local authorities in the region. Similarly, the authorities of the Kursk region have also announced the implementation of the counter-terrorism operation regime in the area for comparable reasons. By the decision of the National Anti-Terrorism Committee, due to the increased level of sabotage and terrorist threats from Ukraine, the counter-terrorism operation regime has been introduced in the Kursk region. The Kursk governor posted, the Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee has also announced the implementation of the counter-terrorism operation regime in the Belgorod region. The National Anti-Terrorism Committee statement describes an unprecedented attempt by Ukraine to destabilize the situation in several regions of Russia. The committee notes that additional measures are being introduced in the three regions to enhance anti-terrorist security.